In today's video, we're going to make it rain zeros and ones to create this particular digital sci-fi animation. It's going to be a slightly more intricate process as compared to yesterday's video where we created a very simple version just like this. If you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. And as for today, we're going to use simulation nodes. We're still going to keep it really simple. So with that, let's begin the tutorial. In our default scene, let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, zoom in, press X to delete it, and then press shift A, search for a grid node and plug this into the group output. Now from this grid, we're gonna be creating the points onto which we're gonna add in the different numbers. So essentially the total size or the total area from which you want it to rain the numbers is dependent on the size of this grid. So choose that according to your own preferences. For now, I'll just go with a five by five grid and that should be fine for my animation. Now we we want to distribute a bunch of points on this space. So I'll press shift A, search for a distribute points on faces node, plug that in after the grid, and this seems to be the points. I want much fewer points, so I'm going to decrease the density down to 0.5, and I think that seems all right for what I'm doing. I might play around with this in a second, but till then, let's start off the simulation node section. So I'll press shift A, search for a simulation zone, and I'll plug this points into the geometry and this geometry into the group output. Now, essentially, whatever happens in this region is going to happen every single frame. So what I want is these points should go down and a new set of points should appear right here. So to make both the previous already existing points to remain along with the new points, I have to search for a join geometry node that I can have both the previous and the existing or the new ones. And with that, I have to join this particular distribute points on faces so that we get a bunch of faces or a bunch of points distributed on this initial grid once again. But right now, if I play it, nothing's going to happen, or at least it'll seem like nothing's happening, but there's actually multiple points being created in the exact same position. So the first change that I have to do is make sure that these points that are already created move down. So to do that, I'll press shift a search for a set position node and plug that in after the joint geometry and just offset it on the z-axis by a very small negative number so maybe let's go with 0.01 now if i play the animation you can see how it starts falling down maybe 0.01 was a little too less so i'll increase it to 0.05 and now go back to frame zero and rerun the simulation and now you can see how they're forming but right now they're all falling down in the exact same position because we're distributing the points on the exact same place as the previous frame so to change this every single frame we can search for a scene time node because we are in geometry nodes and just connect this frame into the seed and now if you go back to zero to reset the simulation node you can go ahead and play the animation and now you're going to get a new random seed every single frame and you're going to get this nice distribution of points that keep falling maybe i'll increase the end to something like 300 so that it falls for a little longer now that we have this set up all we have to do is instance the ones and zeros onto these points that are created and we also don't want all of the points to keep remaining so if if a point reaches a certain threshold on the z-axis, we'll go ahead and delete those points. So all of that can be done after the simulation zone. So let's deal with that section right now. By moving the group output to the side, you, we can make some space to go ahead and search for an instance on points node because we want to instance the zeros and ones onto it. Now this section is going to be the exact same as yesterday's video. So definitely check that video out if you haven't already. What we want is we want to instance some numbers or digits onto these points. So I can search for a strings to curves node and I can plug this curve instance into the instance socket of the instance on points. Next for the actual string we can search for a string node and plug that in or we can directly type in zero over here and that way we have a bunch of zeros instance on every single point. But we don't want the zeros to be this large and we don't want them to be oriented like this. So the first thing that we'll do is fix the orientation by rotating them on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll change the scale by changing this size over here down to something like 0.1 and now we have really small zeros falling. You can always increase it till you're happy with the actual size. I'll maybe go with 0.15. Then just because I do this every single time, I'm going to change the actual alignment to center and middle, although this won't make any difference to your animation. Then I want to change the font by selecting this button and I'll use Heartbit, which is a font that you can find on the internet for free. Once you open the font, this is what you get. And now you're going to get a bunch of zeros falling down, but we don't want just zeros. We want some ones as well. So I can go ahead and duplicate this particular setup by pressing shift 
shift D after selecting both the nodes to select both the nodes of course press shift and select and that way both of them get selected and then on this second string to curves node we'll change the string to one now we have to actually have both of these present so I'll have to press shift A search for a joint geometry plug that in before the group output and then plug this instance into the joint geometry so now we have both a zero and a one present on every single point however we haven't connected the points into this instance on points node so we don't actually see the ones to fix that all we do is select this from here and plug it into the points now we have a zero and a one present on every single one of the points we don't want it for every single one of the points we want it for a random selection of points so we can search for a random value node switch this from float to boolean and then plug this into the selection for the first instance on points node and now we have zeros on only a few of the points but we have ones on every single one of the points so we want the ones to be present only where there are no zeros present and for that we can search for a boolean math node switch it from and to not and then plug this value in here and take this and plug it into the selection so now we have either a zero or a one on every single one of the points randomly selected by this random value node now to switch this random value every single time because right now we just have the same zero and the same one falling continuously of course if you want it to be like this that's perfectly all right and you could render this out however if you wanted to change on every single frame you can go ahead and take this frame value plug it into the c and now you're going to have the zeros and one changing every single frame now the problem with this is that they change really fast and it might take a little longer for the human eye to register what it's changing between so i'd like to add in a math node and then change this from add to divide and just divide it by a number that you're satisfied with so maybe you can go with three and that way it changes fairly slowly because it changes every third frame and i think that looks good for this type of an animation now once you're happy with that you'll realize that if you actually switch off overlays when the animation is going on you'll see absolutely nothing and that's because right now everything is a curve and not a mesh so to change it all you have to do is search for a fill curve node and once you plug that in after the joint geometry it becomes an actual mesh then you can always press shift a and search for a set material plug that in after the fill curve and choose the default material and you should be all set with the geometry node section but before we move on I don't want so many points to be present because if we were to render this for maybe an hour or something, we'd have to change this end frame to something really high and the number of points keeps increasing and increasing and Blender has to keep track of that. So by the end of it, even though you're not using anything and you're just rendering out some section over here, Blender is going to slow down really, really badly and it's going to take a long time to render. So to fix that, we have to delete all of the points that appear after a certain area. So to do that, we can delete the points itself right here before we actually instance these numbers numbers onto it. So I'll go ahead and just select everything and shift it over to the side. And then with the node wrangler switched on, I can press shift right click to create a junction over here so that I don't have to reconnect everything later on. And I can just add in whatever I want in this single section over here. So I'll search for a delete geometry node that I can delete a bunch of points, but I want to delete the points that are below a certain Z value. So I'll search for a position node so that I get the position of every single one of the points that are created. And I'm interested in only the Z value. So I'll search for a separate X, Y, Z node. So now I have the Z value and I want to compare this with any value that I give. So I search for a compare node and I want to check if it's lesser than that particular value. So I switch it to less than and I plug the Z value into the first socket and the second socket. I say if the Z value is less than let's say minus five meters then i want it to get deleted so i plug this result into the selection and now if i play the animation you can see it gets deleted as soon as it reaches that minus five meter mark now minus five meters might also be a little too much so i'll go ahead and change this from minus five to maybe minus three and now i just have this small region which seems perfectly all right for my animation i also haven't set my animation defaults so i'll go ahead and do that by coming to the output properties changing my frame rate to 30 frames per second and frames already at 300 output can be wherever you want it to be change the file format to ffmpeg video change the encoding from matroska to mpeg4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless then i'll set all of my render defaults as well by switching on blue and i think that's all there is necessary for this particular tutorial then i'll just bring my view to something that i like or i'll select the camera from the outliner press alt g to clear location alt r to clear rotation then press r x 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees then press g y to just bring it back and then g z to bring it down and then press zero to go into my camera view. Now I can press GY and move it back till I get a nice fit of all of my numbers. I think I have to go up a little bit more and this seems like a decent distribution for my camera and I think this is how I'm going to render out my video. So let's start off the actual texturing. The first thing that I'll do is go to my world background, change the color all the way down to black and then change my viewport shading from solid to rendered so that I can actually see the changes that are happening. Then I'll select my light, press alt G to clear location and then press GY to just move it back and the reason why I'm using my light and not making these emissive is so that 
that the numbers that are there towards the back become less and less visible, which I think looks good for an animation like this. And then I can just change my light color from this white to a green and I can increase the power from 1000 to maybe 10,000. Then if I switch off overlays, this is what it looks like. And I think that looks like a decent reigning digital animation, which can be used for all of your different requirements of cybersecurity, crypto, AI, whatever it may be. You have your digital animation and you can upload this wherever you want. If you like this video, thank you so much for watching. And I'm sure you'll like other videos on my channel as well. As usual, I post videos every single day. So there's a video that you haven't watched somewhere out there on my channel, which might just seem very helpful to you. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, keep watching videos, keep creating and stay creative.